This episode of the Super Mega Cast is brought to you by BetterHelp. If you want to live a more empowered life, therapy can get you there. Visit betterhelp.com slash supermega today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash supermega. Welcome, everyone. It's a, a good little podcast called the Super Mega Cast, and it's hosted by none other than me, Ryan McGee, and my friend, Matt Watson. Yep. Yep. And That's right. Like okay, so we don't usually have topics we sprout, you know, go off of. Right, right. We we typically free ball it. Yes, sir. Um, but last night I watched a certain video that reminded me of a conversation you said that you had uh, with Tucker about having sex with donkeys. Um, I didn't have that conversation. With Tucker. <laughs> and I, I went and uh, I looked up a video. And whatever culture you guys were talking about in South America, exact actually, I was surprised and befuddled and dis- honestly disgusted. That's why Tucker brought it up. It was led- because it's it's a it apparently is a real thing that happens in in certain cultures. It led me to a Vice video that no shit has a kid explaining how he has sex with these donkeys just because no girl his girlfriend won't put out yet he says he starts by and he gives hand mo- the kid gives hand motions with it too it's like first i stimulate her oh and then oh, i op- then i open her up oh and yeah maybe 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 tucker just saw this documentary and that's why he was bringing it it's up it's a vice documentary from like 10 years ago or some shit the strangest thing to me was how everyone was just like, yeah, that's just what it's like here. We just, look, yeah, we let our young boys go and fuck donkeys, but they don't, they don't typically fuck the male, just the female ones. Well, that's good. And at least. you know, they're it's good. You know, one one mother was interviewed, and the mother, on being asked about her son having s- so much sex with these donkeys. Um, her response is, as long as he's not bringing home a woman, he can have, he can have as much sex with the donkeys as he (laughs) pleases, or he likes. Hey, I mean, so. There's an old saying, Ryan. Pussy's pussy. There's a place out there, and it exists right now, where it's just, it's not like. Commonplace. It's not like, hey, I got an idea. Let's go fuck this donkey. It's just, hey, where are you going? I'm about to go stimulate a, a donkey's clitoris and then oh. open its pussy wide and go go deep until I until until I have the experience I want to have with women, but I can't yet. Because in his in his words in the documentary, his girlfriend won't put out. How old is he? He is like young. He's like fourteen or eleven. He's he's a young dude. He's a young boy, and every and all the boys are like, "Yeah, I fuck donkeys too." They're like, "Woo!" Ryan, just because it's weird to you, doesn't mean you have any right to judge it. I okay? think that's that. It, it, it's a I it's another it culture, and just because it's weird, to I you, don't care. You have no right to judge. <laughs> it. I do have a right to judge. No, you don't. You know, I bet I I bet I bet those kids that fuck the donkeys. I bet you do all sorts of things they think is weird. Yeah, like. Eat, eat, um, uh, corn man. You show up to a... I'm pretty sure they eat corn in South America. Yeah, but a guy who just comes out and gets a line of corn? Pretty sure they sell corn in South America at food carts. Yeah, at food carts, but, like, I feel like corn man is, a, like, an event. They're, like, you can make, like, a all-star event out of, like, people will go and line up and, like, sit in lawn chairs and, like, have bountiful conversation and laughs it is nice we should go and it's, it's not it's just like hey i want some corn it's just like this is an exp- maybe it's just because it's an experience for our group it is an experience for our group you know it's always a big collective of people and it we tailgate at the at the corn man park <coughs> kind of we, we just hang out and talk you know goof around monkey around wrestle a little bit but once that corn is eaten back okay wait b- back to this oh, yeah back to the donkey the, fucking the donkey's Sorry. having so just I'm gonna I'm gonna pose a question to you. Sure. No, I would not have sex with a donkey if the opportunity arose. Is that what you're gonna ask? <laughs> no one would look at you weird. Is all I'm saying. If so, if like no one knew. Yeah. 
Well, I mean, everyone in the village would know. They'd high five you for it, apparently. I mean, don't knock it till you try it. Exactly. You know? Who am I to judge? Who who am I to, to say, oh, that's that's gross? You know? I mean Love is love. <laughs> I uh do you want to go on vacation soon? Somewhere South America. I don't know particularly where. Yeah, but... we should do another uh, creative writing retreat. <laughs> yeah. We wrote the best book of all time. All it took was some donkey sex, and the creative juices were just fucking flowing. You would think that you like think of from your perspective in our in our less liberal culture right. than theirs. I can't imagine a world where like I, it's just me and a donkey, and the donkey seems better than my own hand. Like if it's just me and a donkey alone in the world, I don't. I I. I, th- I, dude, I, all I'm saying is. Hey, I'm not defending it, Ryan, <laughs> no, but, def- uh, but come like, on. There's, there's, unless, unless you maybe chop off my hands, you know? Yeah, you're, you're, and I'm left you're not alone thinking with about the donkey. poor people that don't have any hands. Exactly. I might have stolen a few things. Right. Got so. punishment for it. And now you're like, well, what am I to do? No, no, that's vile. That's disgusting. That's, uh, it's beyond fucked up to, to rape an animal. Who are we as. Two white podcasters to pass judgment onto another culture, as you said previously. Is it our place? Are we part of the problem in doing this? Should we uphold and uplift this be, culture? I, I think it would be different if 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 two white podcasters were like, they mix tomatoes and cocoa beans. <laughs> oh, what's wrong with them? But when you're talking about raping an animal, little bit different. They stimulate it before, so it. It wants... doesn't matter if there's foreplay involved. The 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 kid if said sexually the, assaulting the an tail animal. goes up, so he knows when it's ready. Oh my god, dude, that's fucking dis. What a way to start the podcast. Ten, I had to stop. ten minutes of talking about sex with donkeys and and the the ins and outs of it. I told you I had a good opener, dude. I thought you were gonna <laughs> like just do some bit, I and mean, you're like, yeah, so sex with donkeys. <laughs> it it all started because this clip of Jeremy Clarkson came up on like my Instagram reels and it's him discovering this part of another culture's culture. Do you remember what country it was? I don't know where he was. All I know is the place where the Vice documentary is from is somewhere in South America, I believe. Yeah, that's uh I don't know the exact still, name. I'll tell you crazy thing is it's it's far from the most fucked up thing people do on a daily basis around the world. Yeah. You know? I mean, one, you know, beheadings. That's pretty brutal. Mm. Depending on... In the name of God? Infidel. Exactly. Infidel. If someone's being an infidel, I mean, if someone's blasphemous. You can't let infidels walk all over you. No, absolutely not. Right? No. Am I the only one who sees this? Listen, if an infidel tries to say shit to me, I'm sorry, brother, you're getting the blade. Exactly. <laughs> it's just how it goes. You're getting you're getting the pebble and sword. Pebble and sword. Isn't that a game? <laughs> it sounds like euphemism for a penis and small set of testicles. Small set. A big penis with small <laughs> hey, testicles. Yeah. There's gotta be, there's some, you know, it's crazy. So there are people out there that will never know it, but it's like they hold the <laughs> world record for something, something obscure. You hold the world record for something you don't, that you don't realize. We are, everyone holds the world record to something they don't realize. Something as, as minuscule as, uh, saying the most words, Fuck. As saying the most words. Saying the most words with the letter A while taking the least amount of breaths on a Tuesday. Some stupid, you know. You're saying you could finagle it yeah, to where. So everyone holds a world record for something. Sure. Which means that there is a guy out there who has the longest penis with the smallest balls. You know? True. There's a guy who has just the biggest cock. Biggest cock to ball ratio difference, you know? I mean, the, the, little, the little plums I'm rocking aren't the biggest. Hey. Brother. You, on the other hand, man, you got a couple big coconuts hanging down no, there. let me... <laughs> this one's getting demonetized instantly. <laughs> well, that's that's not our fault. That's YouTube's AI's fault, AI's gonna okay? read this transcript the second we upload it and be like, all right, so they started by talking about sex with animals, and then started talking about their penis and balls. Sex with a majestic creature. That is a part of someone else's culture. We're not trying to shame. We're trying to discuss. We're trying to discuss these things, goddammit. We're trying to have have open... Uh, it's the marketplace of yeah, ideas. Yeah, the marketplace of ideas. It's free thought, having thoughtful conversation, leading from one thing to another without, 
getting into some sort of debacle someone, about someone. Someone will get mad that we talked about the donkey sex thing under under the you know saying that you know this is another culture that you don't understand. You know, so what? That's gross. It's sex with animals. Yes, that's in my book. That's that's always a no no. Maybe <laughs> maybe that's from my my American my ignorant American viewpoint, but. Was, Sex with animals is is always wrong and gross. <laughs> if it was a part of someone's culture, just for some reason it was a part of their culture, to the moment from birth, a woman's second child must be eaten alive on the spot by the doctor. I'm not going to go because that person's culture is, you know, a little bit different. I can't judge. I'm going to go, that's that's a pretty fucked up thing. Yeah. We we judge we judge past cultures all the time for, like, their Human barbaric shit. Human sacrifices and shit. Mm-hmm. Well, who's to say that was bad? We just didn't know any better. I thought when I when I fucking slit this dude's throat and rolled his head down the stairs, rain would happen. And did seem to have worked in the past. Sometimes it wouldn't. Most times it wouldn't, but sometimes it would. And it's that's a case what of counts. confirmation bias. They kill a guy, happens to rain. It <laughs> yeah. worked. They kill a guy, it doesn't work. Um, um, we must have angered God in some other way. We must make more sacrifices exactly. now to appease and then eventually, this guy. It will rain. Especially in a place close to the equator where it rains a lot. Mm -hmm. It worked! Yes! <laughs> I wish in modern society we, like, <laughs> on the, the steps of the capital they would be like, God, it's do dry rain. in the Midwest. We, need to, some we rain need to dances? sacrifice some people. Oh, I thought you were about to be like, like politicians would do rain dances. <laughs> we need rain in the Midwest. And now rain dances. Nancy Pelosi out there doing rain dances. Rain dances now are like beautiful yeah. kind of uh, forms Well, I think rain art. dances, rain dances, there's never anything wrong with rain They're dances. They're not necessary. Well, back then, you know, they, they didn't understand that you know, the weather was was a system that's unaffected by what humans do unless it's like global warming where it rains more. See, what they could have done is just created more carbon emissions. And over the years, it would rain heavier and harder. They weren't thinking business. Right. They were right. thinking short term. Do you know how good it must have felt to like be part of a community and you all do a rain dance? And as you finish, it starts raining. That had to be the most satisfying feeling in the world. You know, it's just like you, you're hoping for rain. You do the rain dance and then it starts pouring. That had to have happened a lot, and it must have been the best feeling. Like, yes, it worked. It's like it always happens with a big event, or like you know when it. F think of Noah when it finally rained. How excited he was that you know he, all these years of building an ark finally paid off, and I get to save humanity. It's funny because there's a lot of people in modern day that just you know have uh, disagree with the ark story what do you well they have you know like a form of maybe schizophrenia where they believe they're chosen by god to carry out a task you ever think maybe noah was just one of those guys and and his story just stuck the flood did come yeah and I, the ark was found in some mountains somewhere mount ararat in turkey and it's some bullshit though well you can't go up there obviously Military and, it, and it's just like it's like this there is, is there this is, is the ark that obviously stored two of every there's creature there's something up there there is, there is like like you could see on satellites and stuff, there is there is a structure up there. There's no proof that it's Noah's Ark. Well, it's not Noah's Ark. No. Also, it's well, you can't say that for sure, Ryan. You weren't there. You're true. But uh, you're, you're most you're true. most ancient uh, cultures have a flood story. So it seems like at some point there was a great flood around the world or or something. Seems like the some cataclysmic event happened that a lot of ancient cultures recorded. What if these gods? You see ancient transcriptions of people looking up to the heavens, answering to a beam of light of some sort. What if it's not gods, but aliens? Yes. The angels in the Bible that came down before them? The descriptions of them are pretty fucking crazy. Fucking rotating spheres with eyes all over it and shit. That's creepy. Yeah. There's Dude. some beasts in Revelations that get... Whenever the world ends, it's going to be fucking awesome. Dude, There's going to be a lot of fantasy creatures and shit. How, how, like, <coughs> would you just drop to your knees and pray if all of a sudden you saw those beasts from Revelation coming out of the sky, blowing things up and shit? I guess I'd be overwhelmed at the might of God in that moment. Think, and in, I would have a, to give myself over so I could, you know, live eternal life because I, I don't want to be burning in hell forever now you, that I know. Right. Damn, this shit's real. If you thought you were about to die, do you think still now, even though you're not a Christian, do you think part of you would just resort to praying? Like in general, death. Yeah, like let's say like you're like you you're on a boat that's sinking. You think you'd pray? I probably would. I just think because out of, it's so ingrained in me, and I'd be like, "Well, it can't hurt." It would be know? out of desperation, not any kind of logical thinking. Like I wouldn't actually think that my prayer. It's just like the only thing that I could do. It's like if you are real, God, please. And really, it, it's just 
it just gives you an avenue to kind of beg and scream for help without you because usually you know in those situations you know no one's gonna help you no one's it's a comfort thing i guess yeah you know you have to scream out to someone yeah you know there's a another weird story has nothing to do with fucking animals this is this one's sad there's the story of this uh like teenage girl who called her mom while she was being eaten alive by a bear. Oh, I've seen that. I watched a video about it in Russia. And it's like an hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like an and hour And she was on the phone com- with her mom while she a was. A whole hour. And she died. Yep. And her, da- and her stepdad did as well. Mm-hmm. But That's great. Dude, bears are terrifying. Have, yes. you, ever, have you ever seen like a, like a stuffed bear? Not a teddy bear. Like a. Like a, like um, a taxidermy. Taxidermy like grizzly bear standing up on its hind legs. Huge and dude, they're claws. Have you seen the cave bear shit at the uh, oh, what's the prehistoric the ones yeah, that yeah, were yeah. massive? Yes, animals were so big and scary back could then. Could you imagine running into one of those? Fuck, I could even a regular bear, dude. Like, if I saw a black bear, my heart would be, yeah, pounding. even if I saw like a, a mostly harmless black bear or mm-hmm. uh, brown bears, those are also pretty harmless, I think. easily spookable black bears, yeah, or even if I saw, boo, like, <laughs> yeah. if I like. If I saw even like a bobcat or something, I'd, I've seen bobcats in the wild. It scared the fuck out of me. I was riding my bike in the woods and a bobcat. Or, they're like all muscle. You or can maybe it was see a, the definition. Might have been a cougar or a panther. It was in South Carolina woods. Were you with your mom? It was with my dad. It, okay, I get it. Funny. <laughs> Come on. It ran across the trail really fast. And I, I just, uh, any wild animal that has the ability to harm me, very scary. Yes. We just saw some wild animals. We did. Ryan and I just, uh, we took a, uh, we just got back. Uh, we saw that round trip tickets to Maui from Los Angeles. We took a grueling riding retreat to Hawaii. Yep. We went to Maui. When all we had to go all the way to Hawaii to, to all the whole five hour flight there to, to begin the thought processes and, and writing process of the yeah. book. We went to write the second super mega adventure book. Did not write much. Uh, we fleshed a lot of it out. Got a lot of ideas, but in terms of pen on paper, not much. But it was a really bad time for writer's block to hit. Yeah, when we had blocked out this this one week, to- it was such an unfortunate case too, because there was like we wanted to work the whole time and never leave our room, but we felt like almost an energy, like a gut, like a like a powerful energy from the ocean was calling us to like be one with nature. Yeah, so we took it upon ourselves to answer that calling and do the brave thing. Can you guys tell we got a tan? <laughs> We swam with some turtles. Yeah, there was so yeah, for those of you who maybe live in Maui or have been to Maui. There's sorry, a, there's a there's a place called a uh, uh, a beach called uh, Kanapali. I say sorry because there's a lot of people that don't want the super mega boys to come visit. No, Hawaii. they were protested at the airport when we landed. There were people all with signs and stuff. But Get super mega out. Do not let super mega into Hawaii. They mm-hmm. let us in though. Um, but there's this beach called Kanapali in Maui. Um, with this plate thing called Black Rock, and it's this this lava formation that you can climb up, and it's probably like 20, 25 feet from the ocean, and you, you climb to the top, and you jump off, you fall like 20, 25 feet. Fun fall, but Ron and I, we, we climbed it, we clomb it, we uh, jumped off a few times, I mean, you gotta swim a couple, couple hundred yards back to shore. Yeah. Uh, and water's well, like- hundred yards? Yeah. I'd say like three, four feet. It was feet. a decent swim. But it was it was it was so beautiful because it's like 15 feet deep, but you can see the bottom of the seafloor. You could see all around, and we were swimming. Sharks these... travel fast though, so if one were to come up, it would be like we wouldn't like see it coming from a distance. It would just be there in an instant. Probably if we saw a shark, it'd probably just do this whole thing around us, just kind of looking at us. Um, but uh, tiger sharks are huge. Tiger sharks. 14 are scary. feet. One killed a woman in Maui in December, but didn't happen to us. No, and she was older. Yeah. And God take She was pretty far from know. shore. Most shark attacks happen, even though I was just like, yeah, we were like a couple hundred yards from shore. Dude, there's this video of in Australia of this dude just being eaten by a great white. It's like these guys filming from the shore, and he's there. He's too far off. And it's just like part of his torso or Ooh, leg or something. Can't do just, anything about that. No. It's just Talk like, about a bad day. <laughs> well, you've heard like many times. It's like, it's, it's like. It's not his fault. It's no. It's no one's fault. It's not the shark's fault. It's not his fault. Yeah, you can't. But at the same time, Australia is known. Australia is not where I would want to. So swim. it is your you. You are understanding that nature, particularly the ocean, is very kind of unforgiving. When you step foot in the ocean, it's like you're signing a an invisible waiver. Saying, I am entering the kingdom of 
where humans should not be or not yeah. meant to be. But when we were in the ocean, it was wonderful. It was crystal clear, all these cool reefs and coral. And uh, we were swimming, and these huge sea turtles, like like this big, uh, came and they swam up right by us. And they were so close. Like, like I'm not kidding. Like, their face was like a foot from our face. You could pop up with them and breathe yeah. with them and so stuff. So we, we swam with them for a bit, and we'd pop up at the same time. So they come up for air, and we'd pop up too and see their face come up, and we'd go back down together. And they were curious. They'd come up, and their face would be literally like a foot or two from One yours. hit me with his flipper when he swam under me. Yeah, yeah, they're so close. My favorite was when we would, like, kind of play like monkey in the middle yeah we'd pick one up and we'd just kind of toss it back and forth yeah and then you dropped it and the shell cracked well but you know it happens it's nature you know nature is not invincible and also another fun thing when we took home put it back in the hot tub at the hotel uh let it yes. swim around with us in the hot tub for a few minutes well first we filled the hot tub with with vodka well, we, we didn't fill it we poured some bottles of vodka in the hot tub because you and i like to go under and, and uh, uh, yep you know but we thought he would enjoy it too but this would happen if you got an animal drunk he seemed to be a little kind of down in the dumps a little depressed from the whole ordeal because mm-hmm. i feel like because we found two that were swimming together and when you saw some earlier or earlier the like the day before um there were like a group of six five or six right. together so they obviously like to be together so that one stopped moving, so I guess he was just, like, depressed just, just and lonely. Sul- just sulking. We threw him back in the ocean after yeah. that, though. We, let, we we had him in the hot tub with us for, like, 15, 20 minutes, stopped was, moving after about three. It was dark at that point. I, I, I think I heard him paddling away. Yeah, we just went out on the beach at night and kind of threw him like a Frisbee back in the ocean. Um, but or, they, think, think if he could tell a story. Yeah, he's going to tell the boys back, back <laughs> yeah. home at the reef all about that one. Yes, he is. Um, pretty cool, though. Hawaii is, uh, it was your first time. It's mm-hmm. my second. Uh, I've only been to Maui, uh, but such a gorgeous place. It was really cool to see just a large expanse of just like green, green mountains, yeah, and and coconut trees and seeing the, whales spray yeah. around, seeing just animals be be animals. Some of you might have seen it. Uh, I put it on my Instagram story, but like from the shore, just whales, uh, just jumping out of the water, and there was the mom whale and the baby whale uh, doing that together, and, and their tails coming up. Matt actually, Matt and I, uh, we didn't take any videos because we're more humble than that. But there was actually a beached baby whale, and Matt and I single handedly pushed it back into the ocean, we'll and uh, which gathered a round of applause from most of like the uh, the, the 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 butler staff that you had. Thank God had Jim hire mm-hmm. to replace the good. regular staff that works there. Right, I don't. know, You just can't trust them. <laughs> but he, uh, I mean, we got it at least back in two feet of water. Yeah, and. Uh, you know, from there, it's it's the whales. The way it's in water, it's the whales' job. To, mm-hmm. You know, I don't want to interfere with nature too much, right? Exactly. Um, I'm sure you've seen that video, the classic video where that whale, maybe it was in the UK, uh, got it died and washed up on shore, and they didn't know how to get rid of it, so they, they just blew, blew it, up. it up with dynamite. You know, Reno 911, the movie, I've seen it, <laughs> has a bit like that, which includes a topless scene. Yeah, it does. But it doesn't include ad, ad reads. Off. What ad reads? Yep. Uh, f- 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 2023 is already well underway, so don't wait any longer to level up your small business and set up your year for success. Get ahead of the competition by using Stamps.com to mail and ship. Stamps.com lets you print your own postage and shipping labels right from your home or office. It's ready to go in minutes, so you can get back to running your business sooner. The post office, elevated. Postage rates just increased again. Dang it! Luckily, Stamps.com has the best discounts in the entire industry. With rates you literally can't find anywhere else, like up to 84% off USPS and UPS. Plus, Stamps.com automatically tells you your cheapest and fastest shipping options. Ain't that nice? And listen, you might be saying, well, who the F is Stamps.com? Guess what? They've been around for 25 years, and they've been an indispensable tool for over 1 million businesses. And if you sell products online, Stamps.com seamlessly connects with every major marketplace and shopping cart. It's that easy. Lately, I've been selling single squares of toilet paper out of my garage. New, not used, don't worry. Uh, And I've had quite the demand for them. I use Stamps.com to get the cheapest shipping rates anywhere when I mail these things out to my happy customers. And trust me, they are happy because they know their good friend Matthew used Stamps.com to get the best rates and the best shipping. So set up your business for success when you get started with Stamps.com today. Sign up with promo code SUPERMEGA for a special offer that includes a four-week trial, plus free postage, and a free digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to Stamps.com, click the microphone at the top of the page, and enter code SUPERMEGA. Yay, Stamps! What were you saying? Um, 
There's also a scene in Reno 911 movie where they're all jerking off at the hotel, remember? Oh, and he's yeah. He's going like room to room. He's like, oh, oh yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah. Dude. Did you bust while we Patton were in Hawaii? Patton Oswalt was the, uh, what? Yeah, did you bust while Sorry, we were in Hawaii? Sorry, I was, I was continued. To... Yeah, no, keep going. I'll, I'll bring this up later. Okay, good. Patton Oswalt was the villain in that movie. I was, I was just commenting. I was just. The movie has a lot of famous people in it. I did bust while we were in Hawaii, though. Wait, because I, because I, I didn't, because we shared a bed. Mm-hmm. Small quarters. Mm-hmm. I, I was in, and I, I didn't. And I, and I, I made was, sure. When I, was I was wondering. I, I made was, sure to turn away from you when I was when okay. I when I did it. Okay, okay. <laughs> that was true. <laughs> like while I'm in bed, you're just like, you just feel like a, like wait, a shaking when, of the bed. When did you bust? Huh? I just told you. I turned away. You were asleep. Did you just shoot it off the bed onto the carpet? Mm-hmm. Okay, that's fine. Because you said that the we don't have to pay pay for cleaning fees since it's no. not technically an Airbnb. Right, right, right. So it was like a hotel. So. Yeah. They they take care of it. Mm-hmm. Um, no, uh, I I did almost wet the bed. I didn't tell you that one. Uh, <laughs> I had a dream that I had to pee really bad. That would have been the third time this year you would have wet Stop, the bed, Ryan. <laughs> not your information to divulge. You're the, you're the one who brought it up. You okay? You all up right, the okay. I've wet the bed twice this year, just a little bit. Basically, okay. So this this this, this these both happened in the same week. Mm-hmm. I had a dream. I was I had to pee, and then I went and I went to a restroom and I started peeing in the sink. Mm-hmm. And I woke up right as I started to piss myself, just a little bit, like that much. Ran to the bathroom, pissed. Yeah. Three or four nights later, same dream happened again. Yeah. Okay. Should I talk to a therapist? See, at first I was like, something might be wrong uh, in my subconscious, but then I read that as long as the dream is accompanied by having to pee, it just means that you have to pee. And yeah. But it did. I don't know. And then it almost happened in Maui where I had to pee. And, you know, I couldn't find a toilet, but I had a thing of paper towels. And I was like, I'm just going to piss on the paper towels. And you were there in the dream. And then I woke up and pissed. Okay. Luckily, I didn't pee in the dream. But good. I will say, uh, in that week when I peed, there, there was a common denominator that I can, I can probably point to. I, I had started taking the medication gabapentin okay. Okay. to help me sleep for insomnia. Mm. That might have just kind of numbed something in my brain, telling me I need to get up and pee. Any armchair psychologists or doctors out there want to... Would you care to explain why my friend has nearly pissed himself three times this year? God damn it! I need some fucking answers here. Why am I almost 30 pissing the bed? I could say that now that I'm 27. Almost 30. Yes. I'm 27. It's the first episode I'm 27. Started Super Mega when I was 20. Freshly 20. Very nice. That's right. Very nice. Yeah, but uh, I got something I want to talk about. Doesn't have to do with piss in the bed. Doesn't have to do with sea turtles or having sex with donkeys. Okay. Um, what what do you want to talk about, my friend? We've missed some world events. We have, we've there's a couple world events we haven't talked about. <clears throat> Does Chinese spy balloon ring a bell? <sighs> yeah. But guess what? Our home state. <laughs> our home state <laughs> knew what to do. Shot out of sky just above Myrtle Beach. They just recovered the payload yesterday from the bottom of the ocean. And that's how you do it. Do, do, do. By the way, that is how you handle shit. That's right. Well, also, the Chinese government was saying that it's it's just it's just a, a civilian weather balloon. Mm-hmm. It's like, mm. <laughs> okay. I also don't trust the American government and, and the facts they present to the media about things. But I don't know. I'm I'm willing to trust that it is a surveillance balloon. Yes. But also, I don't know, man. When it comes to like international dick measuring and and, and aggression and stuff, when it's between two superpowers that are notorious for not telling the truth, I mean, I think China more so. But do you think it's just because it's like, you know, it's like we can't do anything because like regardless of who wins, it's gonna cripple us to not like we're gonna leave ourselves open to all these other. Big shots. Also, just I feel like war with China is is, is Italy, Spain, especially Italy, <laughs> Portugal, even Ecuador. You know, the second the second we're left open, Ecuador might <laughs> take over. I feel like no one wins in a war with China. It's economically devastating, a lot of loss of life. You know, not if you just blow them up. That's true. <laughs> Throw a few nukes over there in the middle of the night, dude. Yeah, no, I, I saw a lot of people like, we got, we got, like, fuck, fuck, fuck this. We got Shoot the balloon on a nuke China. Like, I Jesus. see it on Twitter, and I'm like, are, are you an idiot? No one wins in that situation. Did we learn nothing from World War II? We won. I think that's what we learned. That is true. 
We did win. In a weird way, nuclear weapons are, you know, the worst creation, but also in a weird way have kind of created more peace because it keeps country. It keep, I feel maybe I'm fully off base with this one, but I feel like when countries have nukes, they're very careful not to start shit with each other. You know, time out. Because once nukes start going, there's no time out. No, well, we we called time out after the nukes. Oh yeah, we're like. <laughs> It's like it's like if you punch someone and like, all right, time out, I win, time out. <laughs> yep. Well, I mean, are you ta- you playing tag? You tag someone like, all right, game's over, I won. Japan wasn't gonna do much punching. No. <laughs> I don't think anyone, anyone. We sounded proud of that fact. No. Yeah, oh, they no. weren't gonna do shit. <laughs> I mean, they weren't. You can't really. I mean, you can't really. We're the only ones with nukes at that point. I mean, they were already essentially losing it by that point. They were pretty crippled. They were ready to go to the last man, though. Yes. So, damn. Or maybe that's what we told our people so that they would. Maybe that's American propaganda. They would drop them. You know what? You and I are not immune to propaganda. No. In fact, no one watching this is immune to propaganda. Yeah. Assholes. Except know. for you, Jason. Jason, you're immune to propaganda. Well. Mallory, on the other hand. No. No. Mallory, you are not immune to propaganda. Mallory. And I'm sensing Brian. Brian, not Ryan. No, not Brian. Like it me. depends. Brian with a B, in a Y. Yes. It depends. Um, depends no, on what the propaganda I, is. An I. Brian but, with an I. Brian with a Y is not immune to propaganda. Yeah, very susceptible to it. Actually, mm-hmm. believes pretty much anything he sees on the news. Uh, no, but uh, I mean, I here's what's weird. Okay, we shoot down that that spy balloon, that China spy balloon. Yeah, and all of a sudden. In Canada, there's all these UFOs. Oh, okay. we're shooting down left I, and right. I say, Canada shoots down another. Who knows what it is? Another Chinese spy and balloon. We shot three more objects down. One all of them these, was an octangle. These Chinese UFOs. And they say they say, well, they said none of those were Chinese. The things we shot down, they said they're not Chinese. They said we don't know whose they are, where they came from. As a speaker that just, like once captured goes, this is not Chinese. It's like a thick Chinese accent. <laughs> I'm not doing it. <laughs> okay, uh, you can imagine it. Uh, oh, oh, damn it. Oh, that's disgusting. But basically, <coughs> no, but I will say it's very just interesting and, and fascinating all of a sudden all these unidentified flying objects that are being shot down that they say they don't know whose they are. They can't identify them. They're not balloons. They don't know how they stay in the air. One how much shape. information would you trust the government in giving about stuff, you know. Very little. Like, they, what do they do? It's like, they lie for reason. It's like, they lie to cover up something, but it's never to cover up the thing they're like, the direct thing they're lying about. It's kind of like a... I don't think they're aliens. I no. think I think the most realistic thing is probably they fine-tuned their radars now to detect more stuff, and now they're detecting things. But what they did say, what the what the White House did say, is that... 2021 was when they started for the very first time briefing the president and having briefings on unidentified flying objects. Ooh. And what they can say is they've been here for a very long time. Okay. We don't know what they are or who they belong to. And they defy a lot of physics and gravity. And they can outmaneuver us. So maybe this is the beginning of disclosure, Ryan. Maybe they're, they're, they're slowly. Where are these ships? They don't capture them. Why not? They can't. Hmm. Too fast. Also, so, also where, the stuff that they shot down, they can't find the Where's the this remains. evidence? The evidence? Where's the evidence? Where's the physical evidence? Well, there's videos and radar and testimony. Hmm. But Video, there's videos of Bigfoot, too. Well, those are real. <laughs> they are, though. The Bigfoot ones. These ones are bullshit. bullshit. Like, but Bigfoot and the Loch Ness Monster, those videos? Nessie? You can't. You can't argue with video evidence. You can't. Just can't. I heard a video of Joe Biden talking about shooting men with muskets in his house. Well, I heard uh, a video of Donald Trump and Joe Biden that you were playing, talking about making making <laughs> legal. You should probably beep that word. Luke, <laughs> yeah, just yeah. For the for the algorithm, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, they were there. <laughs> it's a video of Joe Biden and Donald Trump debating with incredible AI voiceover, talking about UFO trips for the white boys to Agartha to legalize yeah. alien lean and and. The bad thing uh, that should be bleeped yeah. will be bleeped. Starts with a C. Yep. Uh, but I don't know. I just think it's I, I think it's interesting seeing all these headlines of, of shooting down these unidentified objects, and they can't find the things they shoot down either. They're gone. 
Hmm. Isn't that weird? No, we shot it. Our aim is good. Okay, then where is it? I don't know. Beats me. Should be right there. I definitely shot it. Could you imagine, like, it's that simple to where it's just, like, people's egos getting in the way so it makes information, like, We didn't askew. actually shoot it down. <laughs> no. The pilot misses and he's like, got it. <laughs> yep. Got it. Because he knows if he He's like, then where is it? I don't know where it went. Because he just wasted a million dollar <laughs> missile. Uh, got it. Yeah, I, oh, I saw it. It fell in the ground. Search teams three days. Like, it's shit. The aliens must have just vanished. I don't know. It's kind of like when, have you ever killed a cockroach? I mean, you come back to clean it up and it's gone. <laughs> no, I make sure them shits are dead. Dude, I've I've killed a cockroach before and it's on its back and I'm like, ah. And I, I go to get like paper towels or something to clean it up or I just like leave it for a second and come back later and it's gone. And I'm like, okay, either he wasn't dead, he was faking it, or his little fucking friends came and got him, <laughs> Took him. For, for a funeral and now they're <laughs> pissed off. They, well, ugh, if you see one. Yeah, if you see one, that means there's a lot more. I heard something that was like, for every one you see in your house, there's a hundred more. I haven't seen a cockroach in my place for the longest time. I've never seen it one is, in my place. It has been about two, three years since I've seen one last. Actually, I did see one once, but the weird thing was it was like a South Carolina cockroach. It was the day I got back from South Carolina, and it was on my top floor next to my suitcase. So I'm wondering if and it was And the one we in- tickled. Yeah, that one. That was outside my house. Yeah. But I'm wondering if if that was that cockroach was in my luggage that whole time. And then I opened my suitcase and it climbed out, Disgusting. saw it and killed it. Disgusting. I hate cockroaches. I think TSA sometimes just like It'd be a good prank. Throws in a roach into someone's luggage. Throws in an invasive bug into some international luggage. Because like it's not something you'd get caught for. No. Because you'd be like why would I put a live cockroach in someone's luggage? It's like, yeah. It's like, isn't it more likely that it somehow got in there when they were opening it in an airport and it crawled in from under a seat or something? I mean, they tend to. I don't know. They usually take my bag and search it. How easy would it be for a TSA agent to put a glove on, it's get in his pocket? It's because you didn't take your... your uh... I didn't take my naked juice out of my bag. <laughs> no, you didn't take it. Your... Was, it was half drank, and it was in there from the flight over. They have signs that tell you exactly I forgot it was what... in there, Ryan. <laughs> I put it in there on the flight over. And I didn't really go through my bag that much in Hawaii. It was at the bottom of my bag. Everybody makes mistakes. Everybody, Everybody has, has those days. days. You know? Yeah. And that was one of those oh, days for me. Yeah. Left my naked juice in my bag. Next thing you know, TSA is going. <sighs> and then they have to yell at me for it. Because the second I notice it's in there, I know what I did wrong. I'm like, ah, oh, I forgot to. But they still got to give me the whole fucking spiel. You know you're not allowed to have liquids inside the bags so, yeah, over a it, certain whatever fucking threshold. It was an accident. I said, Matthew Watson, if you ever do this again, you're going on the no-fly list. Could you imagine being on the no-fly list? <sighs> Saw that person hacked the no-fly list and released it. Really? This person on Twitter who is like... Who, who's on it? Anyone interesting? Well, like, we have a lot of mutuals with this person okay. that hacked the no-fly list and release it. They're just like a hacker that just... They Did have a it. funny Twitter account, too. Like, they, like, from what I saw, it was very, like... Ooh, woo, irony shit. Yeah. But they just hacked the no, they got the no fly list and then they just, <laughs> yeah. Anyone interesting on this no fly list? I, I didn't see anyone. Hmm. It's just a lot of mostly Middle Eastern people, I believe. Oh, okay. You know, as the TSA tends to do. Well, um, but I, I don't think there's anyone, they, there was a lot of people on it. Granted, they did fly three planes into, into our most treasured monuments. All Middle Eastern people did that, Ryan? Yes. Yeah. I was a part point. of it. <laughs> <laughs> I was a part of the coup. I was I was I was communic I was working communications that day. I remember it just as clearly as any other. You were on those radio those radio lines. Ev- it's not just every Middle Eastern person. Everyone with even a fraction of a percent of Middle Eastern in their blood. Like if you have that in your genes, you just know. And since you're not a part of that, you just don't know. I don't I don't understand. I'm sorry. I knew right from the beginning. Just when, having that little bit. When you were born, you knew you would be part of something greater. I have that little bit that people should just fear. You know what I mean? I fear it. Good. It's that rage inside of me. See, it's it's the part of you that's white doesn't scare me, but the part of you that's Middle Eastern, Ryan, terrifies the hell out of me. And it should. I, I, I live in perpetual fear. There's a lot of righteous rage. I, I'm scared you might, you might do something horrible. Ryan's righteous rage. Hey, all right. Ryan's righteous. Rhythmic rage. Rhythmic. 
because I'll make a music spinoff game of it. A game? Yeah. Not a song or music video, just a, a whole music video game. Yeah. Like Guitar Hero. But you're committing terrorist acts mm -hmm. to a beat? Yeah. Not a bad idea for a A recent game. game did come out. I can't remember the name of it. Oh, I saw videos of it. It looks cool. It looks cool. And the, like, the art is, the, the humor is whatever. But it, like the art style looks Reminds wonderful. me of Rhythm Heaven, if I'm thinking of the same one. It's very colorful, kind of cell shaded. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> uh, have you ever played Rhythm Heaven? No. Very fun. Have you? Oh, do you remember that? It was kind of like a, if I could remember what that game was. The main it was kind of like Rock Band or like Guitar Hero, except... It was so basic, and it was on like addictinggames.com. Mm -hmm. It was like a like a stick figure guitar yep. game, and I don't there was like some was called, sort of story or career, maybe even. Yep. <sighs> the good old days. The good old days when that's what you were worried about. My high score in uh, stick fighters, or or uh, was this other really good game I played. I don't even remember what it was called though. Hmm. It was like a it was like a deathmatch platformer. You could unlock like ninjas and pirates, and it was on addicting games. Mad, whatever. I don't remember. I can't remember what it was. Do you remember that remember. one where you're like, you're those, it's like the character designs, they have no legs and their hands are floating and you fight each other like guns or That's what stuff. I think we're thinking of the same game. And they had like, instead of a face, it was just like kind of like a cross. It was like a blank face. Sounds usually so familiar. Or like you could, get, house. you could get like costumes and get glasses for them and hats and Miss deck them out. Flash games, the old era of flash games. <sighs> R.I.P. Rest in power, Flash. You know? The new Flash movie, though. Fantastic. Looks oh. great. <laughs> Ezra Miller. They are something. They are an interesting uh, character. All the... I think they're just an asshole. Yeah. Mentally ill asshole. I think they are. Granted, but still an asshole nonetheless. Mental illness doesn't excuse you from being an asshole. No. You know? It can make you act out and do some crazy things, but it doesn't which, excuse you from being an asshole overall. Which your friends and family are, you know could understand but as strangers uh we do not have to give them that luxury exactly exactly you know because there's a lot of mental illnesses that don't make you act like an <sighs> asshole Fuck. what but everybody makes mistakes everybody has those days yeah i love you <laughs> i love you too do you want to an ad break and uh I would love to take an ad break. Okay. I have to urinate. I'll uh meet you in a minute. Ryan, I'm sorry for what I said. About what? About the part of you that's Middle Eastern. I didn't mean it. You're good. You're good. Why you give me that look? I thought we were about to go do something. I guess I read the situation wrong. I'm just we'll go use the restroom and then we'll come back and finish uh finish up the podcast. For, did you mean it though? Uh, did I mean what? What you said about your part in 9/11? I thought you were just doing an edgy bit, but we, we can we can talk after. I, I do have to use the restroom and stretch. <laughs> Almost uh, towered over. Okay. You know? Yeah. Very funny, Ryan. I know people who died in that shit. This episode of the Super Mega Cast is brought to you by BetterHelp. When you're at your best, you can do great things, but sometimes life gets you bogged down and you just feel overwhelmed or like you're not showing up in the way that you want to. Working with a therapist can help you get closer to the best version of yourself because when you feel empowered, you're more prepared to take on everything life throws at you. If you're thinking of giving therapy a try, BetterHelp is a great option. It's convenient, flexible, affordable, and entirely online. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. You know, I BetterHelp has been a huge staple in uh, helping me get over uh, the unfortunate evaporation of the water in my sea monkey exhibit. I loved every last one of them. Uh, they were dear to me. I, I would say they were uh, they were like children to me. And um, if you want to live a more empowered life, therapy can get you there. Visit BetterHelp.com slash SuperMega today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P, dot com slash SuperMega.
We're back. Hey, back. We are. We are. We are back. farmers. Bum 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 bum. You know what? It is kind of bright in here. It is a little bright in Let here. Just and our best friends outside with the leaf blower. He is blowing hard, baby. It's Wednesday, and you know what that means? Leaf it's man. Leaf, leaf blower day. Leaf man. It out is there. the day of the leaf blower. Um. So Matt. Yes, sir. People are wondering. What are they wondering? And they've been asking, how in the world do they get such delicious cinnamon swirls in every bite? <sighs> delicious cinnamon swirls in every it's, bite. It's something that is, that is so <sighs> mind-boggling that scientists still don't have an answer for. But they do know one thing. They can see why kids love the taste <laughs> of Cinnamon yeah. Toast Crunch. <laughs> Thanks for going on that trip with me, brother. Of course, man. Of course. You always support me. Hawaii was great. It was. It was. It was. Thanks for going on that trip with me. I still owe you and Jim mushroom chocolates. I'll get those to you tomorrow. I was thinking about that last night. I'm sorry. I apologize. I want to try microdosing. I want to see. Tomorrow, I will give you your shroom chocolates. Okay. Thanks, man. I've heard great things about microdosing. This batch is great. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Made it myself. Jim actually did make homemade mushroom chocolates at my house when he lived with me. Did you try them? I did, yeah. And? I had I had just one square one day. Just uh, I wasn't looking for like a heavy trip. I just wanted to let loose a little. See yeah. see what Jim's chocolates and were like. Did you let loose? Yeah, it was nice. I just felt very mellow and uh, chill for maybe like an hour. Okay. And then I took a big nap. I love sleeping. I uh, I want to try microdosing though. I want to you know Jim's Jim's Jim's. He is right outside the window with that leaf blower. He is. Jim's tried it many times, said uh, he's, he's come to work microdosing, said it, it's great. He feels productive. He feels happy. Feels He'll pop a few squares in, wait an hour, drive to work. <laughs> few squares would be quite the trip. I, uh... Yeah, from his place to the office? <laughs> I got you I, I did, with, uh, uh, I got you with your own, uh... Pretty good zinger. Come on. I know. I, I split a mushroom chocolate bar with Oxel uh, at my house once. And we went to... We did went you to go Minecraft. to the moon and back? Yeah, we did. It was, it was great. The mushroom chocolate bars they sell are fantastic. I have it was just uh, a nice, pleasant trip. My carpet turned into a, a beautiful oil pastel painting. I have three in my fridge right now. I know uh, I have, like, a s'mores-flavored one. I haven't had any... Uh, he's right outside. He's, he's, like, feet... He's feet from us right now. Hey! Slapping his back. He's right behind the curtain. <laughs> Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, hold on, hold on. We'll let this, we'll let this rude son of a bitch let this honky out here. No, oh, there he goes. <sighs> okay. He'll be back in a minute, but okay. You haven't done psychedelics in a while. I haven't done psychedelics in a while. I haven't done them probably since 2018. Yeah. Was that the last 18? time with me? Mm-hmm. 2018, yeah. Where Tucker was uh, intentionally making goofy faces, and still to this day claims that he wasn't. He was. We it, both saw, and it wasn't because we were tripping on LSD. It's because it hadn't was, even. It didn't even like. It wasn't hitting all the way. It was just op- starting to hit. He was. It, it, it's the same mindset of I'm not touching you. Yeah. You know, he's looking at us, going, "I'm not making a face. What face? <laughs> I know that it's like." It it made his face look weird. What he was doing it made yeah, it look even a little because even if he made a slight face on LSD, it's completely exaggerated and and looks like it starts growing and continues growing. Yeah, you know, that's Tucker's fault. Yeah, that's Tucker's. He's fault. not a good babysitter. Well, his face I looks like say. that even off of acid. You know, so yeah, I haven't I haven't done LSD in in years. So well, you're about to do some. I do like chocolates at least. LSD is heavy. It's intense and. And I'm a big proponent of psychedelics, but also, you know, I, I, I would advise caution to anyone with psychedelics that you got to be in the right mental and spiritual place to do these things. It's Who wants heavy. to open their mind with Matthew Watson? I'm going to start a new show. Open your mind. You do, you do a bar, a whole bar, and just stream yourself live and see where it takes you. I never want to Trap yourself in a green screen room and have chat be able to have control of the green screen. <laughs> <laughs> Even better than a green screen, uh, it's like a white wall that's, and the only light in the room is is a projector that's projecting Ooh. on me in the wall. And chat can control what's playing on the projector. They the speakers, can, the speakers, what's so playing. So they can mix they and can match tones. Lights. Oh, oh that's perfect. Matt Watson's bad trip experience. 
and I challenge chat to give me the worst trip imaginable. <laughs> could how how much could a bad trip fuck someone up? Depends. You know, if it, they weren't already Well, it t- it depends on on mostly I believe it depends on your underlying mental health issues, you know? If you're susceptible in your family or, or stuff to things like schizophrenia mm. or or, you know, severe, you know, bipolar stuff like that, psychedelics are not not a good move. Uh, cuz it can really amplify that stuff. But if you're in a pretty good headspace mentally and and healthy, then you know, it's a, it's a it's a it's a great experience. It's very very mind and eye opening. First Third time I did it was right after a very traumatic experience, and yeah. it was very therapeutic for me. It is very therapeutic at that time. I I used to do uh, ketamine therapy, and uh, I did it for a period uh, like two summers ago, and it was. Did you go to the doctor for that? No, it was at home. Oh. But it was it was a uh, California allows at home. Yes, and it was it was great. It was super therapeutic. Was it like you went to a doctor and he prescribed you mm-hmm. with it? And it was did it uh, come in powder. Because uh, I knew someone they gave little it tablets. to. It was like powder. They look like the marshmallows in hot chocolate. You mm. put it under your tongue. One of the worst tasting things I've ever tasted. It tastes like sucking the ink out of a Sharpie. Like bitter? Yeah, and you, you put it under your tongue, and then you like let it dissolve, swish it around your mouth for a few minutes. So this nasty tasting thing, you have to really like swish around your mouth. Uh, and then for like, you know, an hour to two, you just kind of go into this state where you just like, break down your ego and go into your head and kind of just work through your, your problems on your own. So obviously then you haven't done it yet. No, no, not okay. yet. No. Okay. <laughs> uh, it, it, it was really therapeutic and really great. Uh, I think psychedelic therapy is, is, I hope it's studied more and I hope that, I mean, it's slowly being implemented more in like mainstream and what you're saying is it's pretty rad. It's pretty groovy. Okay. Actually. okay. Pretty groovy. Very, very impactful though, I think. And, uh, Especially for like treatment resistant stuff like PTSD and depression, it's it's super. Well, that specifically, super ketamine is used like for patients who specifically have like those types of issues. It's because it it from what I understand from doing it and, and learning about it is that uh, on things like ketamine and mushrooms, you're you're able to to repave neural paths in your brain that are have been enforced negatively for a long time. You can repave them in a more healthy, positive way. And then your thinking patterns can be improved in a, in a positive way. I don't know. There's a lot of science about it. I'm not a scientist. I mean, I also heard in some certain instances it curing cancer. Yeah. Turns some gay people straight as well. Hey, yes. Which is a miracle. I'm sure there's been a... No, well, it, it gave them the strength to choose to be right, right. straight. I'm sure there have been straight guys that have done LSD and then come out gay. Not that the acid turned them gay, but that it's more of they were probably in denial of it, and then while on psychedelics, they accepted themselves. I could then, see that, especially since I feel like a lot of uh, young men who come out as gay do so probably right on the precipice of being out of high school or being out of college, either too. I think a time those when are, you experiment with drugs. Those are, yes, that you experiment with drugs, you're around more people who might you surround yourself with more people who would think similarly right. to you. you expand your worldview exactly or in a lot of instances you're making it smaller because of confirmation bias true. amongst friends true getting yourself a little community of nothing but toxicity and, and Which all is good and then you step back and you go all i do with these people is shit talk other people and shit talk what other people do and shit talk things it's very, very it's very tiring yeah, we. I mean, we've been in that situation with with circles of people where it's just I feel like negativity. That's, a, that's early twenty shit too. Yeah, one hundred percent. My early twenties, I was a much more negative person, and and I also surrounded myself with negative people. And you kind of like, I don't know, you you hit this point where, for me, I hit a point where I was really unhappy, and I didn't know why. And then I kind of was like, wait a second, I'm so, I'm constantly surrounded by negativity. I'm being negative and complaining all the time. Yeah. Everyone around me is too. And kind of getting outside of that is is super freeing and I, and very like oh my god I don't I agree I don't need to be negative all the time finally getting out of like the game grumps office <sighs> yeah those guys um, were disgusting it was hell on earth and it especially, can't be described as anything less especially you know I mean my first experience with LSD was, was Danny was slipping into my coffee every day at the game grumps office for about two months to you. straight right about two months straight I was in a which is illegal trip. by the way yeah. I was 16, um, mm. and uh, for legal reasons, so Dan doesn't sue me. That's a joke. I uh, 
Danny never gave me LSD. He's like, this is the last straw. This would be the last straw. <laughs> the wig thing, the Oath Keepers thing, if, if... I'm surprised there was as much blowback from Danny about the Oath Keepers thing. He wasn't the biggest fan of that. that <laughs> no, no. I think that... I think right away he took on that one a little more than the wig stuff or anything else. But... Yeah. You know what? He said, he said that, that someone close to him phoned him up and asked him if he was Are you an keepers. Oath Keeper? Um, <laughs> Obviously, then you shouldn't be close with this person if they don't know you and they don't know... If if the content of your character can't can't be enough evidence of itself for being a decent person to your only family member, Dan, I don't know what else to do for you, buddy. Well, I'll be honest, Ryan. I mean, how much can you really you know, judge or, or, or trust in the character of someone that's in the Oath Keepers. <laughs> and in the entertainment industry. And wears a wig. <laughs> it's all deception. It's all deception begets deception, baby. Yeah. The Oath Keepers thing, though, I, just, yeah. I, really, I really don't. It doesn't surprise me. No. Danny, if you're watching this, that's a joke. We know you're not in the Oath Keepers. You're in Game Grumps. Which, is which while... Is not named the same exact thing. Does as Does hold Oath a lot Keepers. of the same views as the Oath Keepers. <laughs> exactly. You know, Ugh. and donates a lot of money to you know far right political yes. think tanks and stuff. Mm -hmm. But, but again, what someone does with their own money is is their, uh, it's it's their choice. Their money, their choice. Mm -hmm. So, Danny, donate to the Oath Keepers as much as you want. Seems like people. Uh love to spend their own money, and then, when they run out of their own, they want to spend other people's money to help them spend more of their money. Mm-hmm. Ain't that the truth, sister? So. Please don't sue us, Danny. You're not an Oath Keeper. You don't wear a wig. And, uh, you never gave me LSD. <clears throat> okay, now that, that that is clear, that is legal disclaimer. All good, all out of the way. We're all we're all a okay, baby, right there. People, um, people. I've seen people ask for us to do, uh, some kind of like how we've done the Mario Kart videos, like a let's play video on shrooms. Yeah. I don't know how I'd be on recording on psychedelics. I don't want to. I don't want to work. I don't want to make content while on shrooms. No, on psychedelics, I just want to listen to music and and think. Unless I'm microdosing and streaming. My favorite, which no one. I've had zero. Viewers on every single one of I've streamed every day since the first day of January. I even streamed in Hawaii. I know. Not at the high, okay, that's hyperbole. The highest viewer count I've gotten is seven. I don't know what one happened. was me, one was Justin, one was Jim, one was Luke. Okay. Well We wanted to support you, man. I just didn't know views were gonna be dropped like drop out. I I took a break, yeah, but like streaming isn't a career of mine. I didn't I just didn't expect people to just fall off that quickly. I just wanted. because I didn't stream for so long. I have been wanting to stream some more lately, but I don't want to repeat the rinse, rinse and repeat the same cycle every year of oh, I'm gonna go back to streaming. When I want to stream, I'll I'll hop on and stream. It's I'm not, not our it's job. not my career, uh, but, but it's, it's hard, hard when I to, do it. It's hard to like do streaming and not have it. I'm not gonna set up a schedule, but maybe every now and then, if I feel inclined, I'll stream. You know, epic in SM3. between naps. In between naps, yeah. You can have nap time on your stream where you're like, I'm actually don't feel like streaming, but. I'll still accept donations. I'm going to go take a nap. I'll be back in about two, three hours. Honestly, you know, what what affects me the most is my narcolepsy, my my daytime sleepiness, and my, my lethargy. So why not monetize it? Why I not? I can argue. The self-centeredness is a big part of you. I disagree. Oh. You said nar narcolepsy. Got it. Got it. it. Not, yes. Na nar yes. Narcolepsy. Yes. Sorry, I got mixed up. The, I was just trying to agree with you to make you feel better. The narcissism thing is separate. Yes. I got them mixed up. And again, my, I'm not a narcissist, Ryan. No, I know that. I didn't say you were. I was just agreeing with you so you wouldn't just, be upset with dude, me if I disagreed with you. I, I don't know why having the confidence to admit that I am smarter and more talented and, and popular. And you think more broadly than your average man. I'm, I'm proud to be able to admit that. That doesn't make me a narcissist. You're on the cusp to understanding the fourth dimension, being the first human. To be able to conceptualize it. With and, psychedelics? And yes. Pe and, and people say, that's lazy? When you're on the breach of a scientific, honestly, not even discovery, miracle, 
of the fourth dimension of and of of a human that exists in the third and can only conceptualize the third being able to view into the fourth dimension. That's why I sleep so much. I I I'm astral projecting you're when I do that. You're trading like in like an in insidious. So people might say, "Oh, you're just lazy." You know, narcolepsy, poo poo. Exactly. For me. I'm astral projecting. I'm remote viewing when I do that. I'm traveling to far off lands. I'm breaking out of the upper atmosphere into the lower levels of space. I'm getting further out each time I do it. And I'm slowly, slowly unraveling the very fabric of space time and peeking at what's beyond it. Here's Matt Watson. And here's, and here's the truth. Mm -hmm. The truth, Matt Watson. Except instead of them flying away from each other when they collide, <laughs> they, they, they melt into one brand new lighter. Yeah. So, Luke, just free, don't show, I'm sorry, Luke, but don't show them, never mind, Luke, just, 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 just show your penis again. My yeah, guess. He uh, likes showing it. It's all right. <laughs> it's a nice penis. Nothing to be... Jealous about, but it's still a nice pink. <laughs> I know, I know we don't proof watch these episodes. So, I mean, technically, Luke could put a real picture of his penis right there in the Patreon upload it, cutting. upload it to YouTube, and we wouldn't even catch it. And True. it probably would go out, and people wouldn't even notice until they get to probably this. before going out. Uh, how know. good is the system at recognizing genitalia? I don't know. Sex gets uploaded to YouTube every single day. You can go on YouTube, search sex or big breasts, sort by newest, a lot of porn there. Oh, or go to r slash sex on YouTube. I don't know if that's a real subreddit. I was watching a clip from a movie on YouTube the other day. Completely caught me off guard. Breasts. Boom. <laughs> right there. On, on my YouTube. Yeah. Were they nice? Yeah. Okay. It also it also wasn't the worst thing in the clip. It was a clip from Schind Schind Schindler's List. Is there a pair of bad breasts? <laughs> yeah. I've met your mother, Ryan. Then why do you continue to sleep with her if she has such bad breasts? Power dynamic. Power dynamic yeah. of what? Someone who has no breasts and someone who has bad breasts? No, it just makes me feel better. This is the narcissism thing again. Yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, to go, I mean, you did fall asleep to your own music in Hawaii. So I did, yeah. I woke up on the couch. Was it still playing your stuff? No. <laughs> no, maybe it was. Imagine. No, I was. Got drunk in Hawaii, and I and I was showing Ryan some of my music, and then mm -hmm. just fell asleep. It was nice. I fell asleep to your music. Sorry. No. I woke up embarrassed the next morning. Did you? I did. I felt very embarrassed, actually. Well, you should be. It was very embarrassing. It was embarrassing. Especially the way you treated our wait staff. Well, they deserved it. The food was, like, it took 45, you, you expect to wait at least an hour. It came in 45 minutes. It wasn't that long of a wait. It wasn't the wait time. It's the quality of the food. Well, they have the wait. The wait staff has no say in the quality. When I of have the food. wagyu beef, A five, wagyu beef, I I expect it. That's the chef. That's the that's the even go up to like. It's all the same shit, Ryan. Positions. It's all the same shit. It's not the same shit. Yeah, These is. people, they're just there to take your order. Do they you should be. They should be well trained it? enough to be able to look at that A five wagyu beef and go. Mm, that's not up to. That's not up to snuff. Well, they didn't know how you ordered it. How were they supposed to know that you you were. That, look, not a lot of people have ever heard of extra, extra well done. Like, no one, like, that's not, like, a thing most people hear. So if it comes out it's burnt. self-explanatory. Extra, <laughs> extra well done. I get that. I want that. that Wagyu burnt to a crisp. <laughs> I want to dip it in my ketchup, lick my lips, and go home, baby. Imagine ordering A5 Wagyu beef. <laughs> extra, extra, extra well, well done. done. Like, crispy black. A nice potato chip meal. If you if you went to a really expensive fancy steak restaurant and you asked for for their finest cut of beef to be some of the most expensive beef in the world to be mm. cooked to that, do you think they'd say no? Probably. They'd probably go, "What we can do well done. I don't know what extra extra well done is. Make it black and crispy." They'd be ruining baby. it. They'd be ruining it. But if, what if it's but you're what paying the for it? What the customer wants. You're paying for it. And the customer is always right, Ryan. That is true. I was taught that. You were taught that. I was taught that. Anyone who's worked in the service industry like Matt and I. Absolute bullshit I mean, way YouTube of thinking. YouTube is the service industry. Yeah. <sighs> it's a little bit harder than those little fast food jobs. What I would give to go back to Food Lion, making seven twenty five an hour. Same. Going back to... Stocking shelves. Working fast food and um, 
yeah, pulling I, the carts in from the parking lot and going and getting all the ones that people leave out and about. Oh, I love doing that on purpose. When I finish with my groceries, I push the cart right in, in between two parking spots. I could just walk. Even if it's right I next to I could just walk 10 feet. Or I could make it so it potentially blocks two parking spots. That's the ultimate litmus test of if you're a good person or not. Because, if you take your cart back? Yeah, because— I take my cart back. I take it back every time. You do? I do. I watch You've seen it. Because here's the thing. There's no negative consequence for you leaving your cart out. That's why, and also, that's why it's precisely the best test. And putting it back, you get no praise for it. No. You don't get a reward for you it. You can give yourself praise. Sure. Every time you go—you can look around, look at all the carts that are out, and go, hmm, I'm not as bad as those people. But ultimately, it's, 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 it's a selfless act that only exists for the benefit— of of working employees mm-hmm. and other people in the parking lot, and they appreciate they they love us for it. The employees do they? They 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 they. I'm sure at night. See, we don't get the gratitude ourselves, but at night they think back to, man, a few carts were in the carpool this time. Next time I see an employee in the parking Thank lot God. after I put my car back, I'm gonna go. You're welcome. <laughs> what a you know doing your job for you. What are you even getting paid for, asshole? Well, that's the mentality a lot of people have. It's like, well, someone's getting paid to do it. It t- takes nothing to make their job a little easier and do your part. Someone is getting paid to do it. As someone who did that, what percentage of carts were put away and what percentage were left out if you had to ballpark it? I'm sure it changed day to day, but overall, your time working. I would definitely say, like, it was different day to day, as you said, but... Do more Sometimes people? Sometimes 50-50. I would say, like, I would find most of them in the right, like, in the car area, except they'd all be, like, you'd have to... Staggered? Yeah. That's not, better than nothing. People just don't... So it's better than nothing, I mean, but it, the thing that sucks about people leaving them out is that since it's not in the designated spot, you have to walk over to the far left side of the parking lot, then over to the far right, then maybe a little behind the building where someone just parked to wait for someone to buy groceries and then come in and load it. It's like, the cart's just... We found carts just sometimes in like the grass, like a there's this grassy field kind of like outside where people just would have to hop the curb. Maybe some some people just fuck around with the carts, just play with them. Yeah, I I you know I'd be lying if I if I said that when I was maybe twelve, you, you my ride fr- my friends and I maybe in the parking lot would ride in the carts a little bit. It's fun, t- put them back fun though. Stuff, put them back. Of course, but you you know I don't if I go to put my cart back and they're all over the place in the thing. I don't necessarily, I don't organize them. No. I'll push mine in. Uh, I'll try to put it in another cart. Sometimes I'll just put it back with the rest of them. But, you know, I'll always, if there's a line of them, I'll always push it all the way in. It's kind of like a li- little guilty pleasure of mine. Uh, every, it's, not, it's, it's, it's not all the time. Every now and then, like, if I have nothing to do, if I'm like, all it is is just going home and relaxing, I guess, after this. I'll just... Look, and if there are carts around, I'll just, like, collect some of the carts and put them in there and stack them right. There's just something about it. It brings me back to, like, the Food Lion days. Yeah. But it's not like I'm I'm walking everywhere. It's, like, five car spaces right. around. If I just see that I've people done that have before. left them. You just There's a couple around. It. It's just, like, hmm, you know, help it's, someone out. It's fun. It's nice. It's a little collection game. Whoever invented the mechanism on the shopping carts to be able to... Compact them together, genius. They are. Strong. You know what we should do as a prank? Whatever happened to mini shopping carts? When I was a little kid, I used one yesterday. That's all I ever wanted. I went to Whole Foods yesterday. One of the ones where you had to go all the way down here. Oh, the li- it, oh. you pull it with the big pole. I thought you were talking about the the ones that are like short. Oh no, I no, used no. one of those yesterday at, at Whole Foods. Those are fantastic. Yeah. Because sometimes I go to this grocery store and I'm getting too much stuff for a basket, but not enough stuff for a Whole big ass shopping cart. Mm-mm. No you know? sir. Remember the ones that had the little car on it? For the kids, yep. it would have the yes. Oh, dude. Well, can't fit in those these days. Oh, well, you can. Well, you could probably. I don't know. I'm you long, man. Straddle the seat. I'm six eight. I don't know. I have to really climb in there. Imagine how embarrassing that'd be. Justin. Justin could definitely fit in one of those. We could get him one. <laughs> it's a birthday present. Yeah. Late birthday I mean, present. Next year. Um. Imagine how embarrassing that'd be. I'm, you and I are at the grocery store, I get in one of those kids' carts, get stuck, and the fire department has to come and get me out. I think I wouldn't be embarrassed. Would you think it's funny? Yes. Would you, you ha- try to help me out? Or? I would try to help you out, yeah, but if the 
If we had you'd to have to be the one to call the fire department. For That's me. fine. My my buddy. You yeah, know, my twenty seven year old friend is stuck in the children's shop. I just cart. have to watch it. And I, I would feel bad in the moment. I'd probably be a little nervous. In I'm the moment. powerless. You could push me in it. You could push me into oncoming traffic. I could do nothing about it. That is true. You know what's a good prank we should do? Okay. Let's I'm go listening. to the grocery store later. Mm. Get a whole bunch of, of locks and lock the carts together. Ooh, okay. Oh, you got me a little excited. You know? So excited. Think about that. That I'm gonna end the podcast. And not only that, I'm gonna remind you suckers that you can watch an extended version of this podcast at Patreon, where you only have to pay five smackaroons a month. Now, it's not just an elongated version of this podcast. It's just an extra show you get called The After Show. The lighting's different. That's right. It, you only get it on Patreon, where you can also get other exclusives, like... There's lots of stuff on there. I'm sending it off to you. Oh, oh, I thought you just blanked out. No. You know... <laughs> Um, you know, there's, there's lots of bonus stuff. If you like our mail videos, you can see the much extended cuts of those, uh, the sneak peeks, there's Q and A videos. There's, uh, there's, uh, you get this podcast early. You get this podcast, uh, ad free before it hits any of the streaming services. Um, Hello? you get all sorts of good stuff. You know, we put some unreleased scrap stuff on there. Uh, put little treats, just whatever you want to post. It's only five bucks a month and you support the boys, especially because our ad revenue has been lately so that really help us out so thank you guys and uh we'll see you next week and uh see you in the after hours bye guys <laughs> matt and ryan that was not funny but i love super mega <laughs>